Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloop Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Starting to feel it. Football season right around the corner. I didn't post the gif. Oh, that's that's what I forgot. Hold on, real quick. Uh, some behind <laughs> some behind the scenes stuff. So as we normally do, this behind that. the scenes. Um, it's it's time for the chimichangas. We're in the first couple. We're still in like the first minute of the show, so I'm not going to say the whole thing. Um, How are you doing, Jared? I'm doing fine. Um, before we get started, um, Kyle and I we did them backwards now, Kyle. It's fine. Listen, off to a great start. We're off to a great start. Uh, this is this is a great op. This is a great time to tell you we were. I, I think we're probably doing. I don't know if this is a hundred. I think is. I think it's set in stone. But I, I feel the need to just say I think so. Um, we're gonna be doing a thing with Bleacher Report on Friday night. Um, I guess it's going to be on the Bleacher Report app. Um, it's going to be a 45 minute to an hour live stream on the app. Uh, and we'll be doing live, not live, well, we'll be live, but we'll be reacting to uh, Big Ten media stuff, especially they, they do. They do want us to focus on Ohio State. That they, that's what they're bringing us in there to do. Um, so it'll be uh, talking about uh, specifically Ohio State stuff. Um, and it, it'll be. Um, Media day stuff. Um, and then I think maybe like a mild season preview as well. Um, yeah. And, and it'll be Jared and Kyle break down coach speak. Oh, you and we are the best at that. Um, but but it just, you know, it, it should be fun. Um, we might get some other people from other fan bases in the chat. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what we'll we're see. getting ourselves into, but we'll see. But yeah, it's a uh, six o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard in the bleacher report app to my understanding we'll post about it on on twitter and elsewhere too um so and you know we'll we'll, we'll figure that out and if you're not already yep. in the discord server we'll definitely yes I, i'm sorry we'll, we'll be on on x we'll, we'll post about it on x <laughs> and <laughs> this is a good time to use a super react kyle uh, anyway, enough of that. <laughs> we're going to do a Big Ten preview. That's what we're doing today. Doing a Big Ten preview. Um, we are going to be doing uh, some reaction to the uh, the pick six preview, uh, which is um, out now. Uh, pick six guys, I think, are I, I. I think they're the best in the biz is I mean, that's they have statistics to back that up. They have third parties to back that up. Um, so it's not even just my opinion. Legitimately, I, I think that pick six previews is the best in the biz. And if you're looking for a preseason guide, especially if you're looking for a, like a digital one that's actually meant to be digital, unlike a lot of the other preview guides, um, you can just download the PDF. It's not that expensive. I, I think they're fantastic. And I'm giving them a plug off the top of their show because we're essentially going to be uh, reacting to their content um, that they put a ton of work into. So, you know, I want to make sure to give them a plug. Yep. OK, nationally, Kyle, if we're looking at the Big Ten from a national perspective. Your email shine because you got the sweet, sweet. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce that part. Um, the I don't know what that means. The <laughs> nationally. Uh, so essentially there's a top 69 um, that is nice. in nice that is in the pick six preview um, uh, on ketamine. Gotcha. As a, another thing we we're talking about before the show, for some reason, uh, we're looking at the top 69 here by uh, pick six preview. Um, Michigan, Kyle, uh, is the top ranked Big Ten team at number two with Ohio State at number four? What was the last time we did one of these when Ohio State wasn't the preseason number one? Because I feel like it's been a minute. It's been a while. Um, Ohio State comes in at fourth behind Florida State, who is. Listen, yeah, it's I, I, Florida State, Florida State's been, definitely been getting a lot of buzz this offseason here. And 
Uh-huh. I don't know. I I, uh, I, I feel as okay. much as I have um, a lot of respect, Jared, for Pick 6 Preview, mm-hmm. I feel this is like a, um, a Desmond Howard pick here. Oh, that that's a mean way. I know what you're saying. But this is a very mean way of putting it. It's a very mean way of putting it. Um, oh, that is true. Like, well, the ACC is it's a two team. Um, it's going to come down to two teams. Is it that many? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. If the, I don't know if the well, ACC has two teams well, this year. Well, well, let's. But let's we're not, not talking get into about the ACC. Clemson yep. and maybe FSU. I like that's that's what Kyle's saying. Yeah, but I don't believe in either of them personally. Uh, mm-hmm. And for what right, it's worth, so, I don't, I don't have their full PDF up, Kyle. Um, do you have do. their full PDF? They, I, I believe they, they, they have Georgia, Michigan, and Ohio State in the playoffs. They, do they also have Florida State? I, I think they do, right? At third, yeah. Okay, so yeah, th- this is this is, yeah, yeah, this one, two, three, four is also their playoff rankings or their playoff is, prediction. Yeah. Um. I'd be sh- I'd be shocked if Florida State got into the playoffs personally. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot more I'd, likely. I'd be I'd be, sh- I'd be shocked if Georgia wasn't number one <laughs> at the end of the season based off of their schedule. Their schedule's pretty weak, especially considering they're in the SEC. Um, I I think that the fourth because I because I do think they're right about Georgia, Michigan, and Ohio State. I do think they're correct about that. Um. My personal prediction is that the fourth team comes from the Pac-12, uh, whether it be USC or potentially Washington, I, I think has a decent yep. team. Um, Utah is not bad this year, too. Utah is not a bad team, but let's get a little sidetrack here. Let's let's yeah, let's yeah. jump back on the Big Ten wagon here. So Michigan, then Ohio State, then Penn State. The only the only Big Ten teams in the top twenty five, unless you count USC, <laughs> which we aren't counting yet. We're not no, counting. Not yet. this year. Not this. Not year. this year. Uh, Illinois, Illinois. Again, I love these pick six preview guys. They're they're excellent at what they do. Illinois at number thirty. Am I wrong? I think I think Illinois this year might be that sleeper Big Ten team. Not not to win it or really make a huge splash, but I mean, compared to what they've done in recent years, I, I think they'll yeah, dramatically it, be a be a if better the argu- team. If the argument is, is that Illinois is going to be good by Illinois standards, then I'll take that. That's fine. <laughs> but good by Illinois standards of being good doesn't equal 30th in my head. I don't think that they're better than Minnesota. I don't think that they're better than, I would say, Nebraska. Um, they might be as good as Maryland or Michigan well, State. I have here. I have here, Jared. I think I think they're I think they're about like an eight and four good team. Illinois so, four. Did you say eight and four? Mm-hmm. I think, right, I, think we'll, I, I can see them being we'll, like an eight and four team. We'll, we'll get, so, we'll get so that, there. that would we'll put, that, we'll put them that would put them right around that 30th um, spot there. So. Uh, Gangland so, yeah. says Illinois was great by Illinois standards last year. That is a fair statement. Bert is going nine and three. We'll worry about schedules later. We'll worry about uh, end of the season records later. Um, I don't want to get caught into that right now. I mean, with all the negative recruiting against Northwestern, he can do now. Burt can usher in a golden era for Illinois. A- Esquire? I love the optimism. But do you... How, how many high-level recruits was Northwestern getting that you think are now suddenly going... Oh, okay, sarcasm. Guys, guys, it was sarcastic. It was sarcastic, everybody. It was sarcastic. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, Illinois 30, uh, Minnesota 36, Maryland 40, Michigan State 49, Nebraska 50, Purdue 55, Indiana 64, Rutgers 67, Northwestern 68. So Northwestern not going to be the worst team in the power five then. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, you know, that's. Hold on. That, that's actually sorry, Kyle. That's it's very worth pointing out. They specifically do a power five preview. So Illinois 
not necessarily the 30th best team because you could have some non AQ teams better. The Cincinnati might be decent this year. There's some there's some non AQ teams that could finish higher than 30th. So that, that's worth noting. That's worth noting. All right. Um, the pick six preview all American team. Number one running back in the nation, according to pick six previews, is Blake Corum out of Michigan. And this is where you're going to expect me to be like Travion Henderson, Travion Henderson, Travion Henderson. And by the way, Travion Henderson. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, Blake Corum's not my favorite running back on the Michigan team. I, I'll, and I'll leave that at that. I, he's not the best running back on the Michigan football team. Donovan Edwards is the best running back on that football team. Everyone was I would like, agree with oh, that, yeah. so many Michigan fans were so happy that Blake Corum was coming back. And I'm like, eh, should you be? That's just, that's just carries taken away from Donovan Edwards, in my opinion. Um, Kyle, uh, Michigan also gets two offensive linemen in the first team pick six, uh, first team pick six, all Americans, um, and a Georgia, or excuse me, well, also a Georgia, but a uh, Penn State offensive lineman also making that first team. Uh, and Kyle, to, I mean, should I say no surprise? I mean, to no surprise, Marvin Harrison's wide receiver number one. There, there, that's, that. I don't, anything else would be an injustice. Mm -hmm. The Mecca Buka uh, is the second wide receiver on the All-American team. That's first team, second wide receiver. So Ohio State going two for two on the first two wide receivers. Not not shocking, per se, um, but impressive nonetheless. Uh, Ohio State uh, does not place anyone in the uh, first team defense, which excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong thing, uh, does not place anyone in the second team offense, um, nor the, no, they do. They have uh, Donovan Jackson in the third team offensive line, um, and they have Cade Stover in the as the fourth team tight end. And I have to say, when I saw that, I thought to myself, huh, are we light on tight ends this year? <laughs> Because, like, no, no disrespect to Cade Stover. I think he's an excellent tight end for what Ohio State expects him to do. But it, it, I'm yeah. just saying, if you said Ohio State was going to place one, two, uh, three, four teams in the, uh, excuse me, four players in the pick six all, on the offensive side, pick six preview, all American four teams. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it would have taken me a while to get the Kate Stover. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that's a little bit of a reach to me, but I mean, one thing that, one thing that really sticks out to me here, Jared, um, there are four in the four First, second, third, fourth team here. Four Big Ten running backs. Yeah, listed in here, and none of them. None of them is Travion Henderson. By the way, that's a crime. You got, that, that's a yeah, crime. Yeah, I I agree too. But I mean that that's that says a lot about how dominant the running backs are in the Big Ten this year. Like it's. Yeah, I think I think this year is going to be really special. Blake getting Corum, to watch these getting what getting to watch these running backs. Blake Corum, uh, Nicholas Singleton at Penn State, uh, Braylon Allen at Wisconsin, and then Donovan Edwards. Michigan placing two running backs uh, be, is the for, is uh, one of the two fourth team running backs. Um, again, I'll say I'll, I'll say it again. I think Donovan Edwards is the best running back in in Ann Arbor. I'm not afraid to say it. Um, 
first team all American defense. Kyle, I know you can see, so I know it's not an honest question. How many players gangland? I'll, I'll leave. I'll ask you as well. How many players do you think it, through four teams, first team, second team, third team, fourth team, all, all American, uh, how many, how many Ohio state Buckeyes do you think are in that list? Because I'm telling you right now, I I don't think it's enough. Um, I mean, again, yeah, I, mean, I, I yes, have all the respect. I, I, see, I see the list here, Jared, but my my first gut instinct was going to be like four or five. I could name eight or nine off the top of my head, Gangland says. So I, I will say this. One, if you're not experienced, you're not going to make it on the list. So you, if you're a young dude coming into the it's it's like uh, Kyle McCord's name is nowhere in this. He's not on any for and he shouldn't be. He has uh, correct one start. You know what I mean? So I'm not I'm not going to be mad about that. Like, he's just not a returning starter. Um, But the so, you know, if you look at like the lack of Ohio State talent on the offensive side, as far as the list goes, um, not in reality, but according to the list, you know, no, no returning quarterback running backs are all hurt last year. The wide receivers make a great outing, but the offensive line's largely been replaced. You can sort of see why there's not a lot there. Um, there are only three Ohio state Buckeyes in the top four teams. Um, now, uh, JTT and Tommy Eichenberg both place first team all American, uh, according to pick six previews, uh, Denzel Burke makes third team, uh, third team defensive back. I, Which, think I mean, he's, he, he's, he's had, he's had his issues. So, I mean, that's, it's fair. It's fair. Yes, it's fair. Yeah. He, he had a rough start to the season last year. I, I get it. Uh, he he improved as the season went on, but I get it. Um, I I'm just gonna say it's, and we'll see it even more when we get down specifically to the Big Ten specific stuff, um, which we're gonna have to do. Kyle, we're wasting too much time in the national. I think um, once we get down there, but the pick six preview guys have totally underestimated Ohio state's defensive line specifically. Agreed. Um, there's basically no mention through any of this of Jack Sawyer of Mike Hall of Tyleek Williams. Hell, they even have, um, sections that are like all American and all big 10 transfer teams. No mention of Tywin Malone whatsoever. I mean, heck, um, heck, Heck, get away from the national. You just go to the the conference first and second team here, Jared. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same. You only have you only have J T. Tommy and Denzel listed in here. Yeah, I think I think yeah. it's a disservice, and I think you're going to see a lot more players that's going to be in there at the end of the season. Yeah, it's. I, I just, it's a miss on their part. And again, they're very good at what they do. They're not going to be perfect. And they also just can't yeah. load out. They can't just load up these teams with all Ohio state players. I also understand that, but it's a, it's a total, it's a total miss service. In my opinion, the, I mean, I'm, I'll say, especially like Mike Hall, Mike Hall is a dude who people are already placing in the top 15 of the draft next year. And Mike Hall is just getting no love in here whatsoever. Um, I think, and I just think that's a mistake. Uh, McCord, Trey, Harrison, Abuka, Jackson, JT, Sawyer, Iggy, Tommy, Steele, Hall. That's 11 easy. McCord's never going to make this list. He's just does not, doesn't have experience. He's, they're not going to put an inexperienced guy in there. Trey, I agree with you. Harrison Abuka did make it. Um, JT did make it. Uh, Jackson made it. Um, he wasn't super he was third team all American. That's pretty good. Um, 
Steel didn't make it. Tommy did. Um, yeah, but yeah, Hall Hall's the biggest miss, in my opinion. If I had to pick one in particular, there's also no mention of Jack Sawyer in any of these lists. I, I think that's a huge snub as well. Um, but anyway, let's let's move away from the national stuff, Kyle. I think we need to uh, get focused specifically on the Big Ten. Sure. So looking here, um, according to Iggy was again, all SEC as a freshman. It's insane to think he won't play well. I agree. I I agree. I again, these these lists tend to be very upperclassmen biased. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. So. Big six previews. Let's just let's just stay in the Big Ten here. They have here Michigan as the as the best overall team, which as as much as it's going to hurt um, Buckeye fans, they're like, oh no, Ohio State's a much better team. It may be, maybe on um, when it comes to recruits and all that. Okay, yes, but what's they been proven so far? They well, they also just got back a ton of players. Mm -hmm. especially along the offensive line. Um, and Kyle put the, no, well, he put the first team defense, uh, first team offense, Kyle, how many Michigan offensive linemen? Three, I mean, three, three Michigan offensive linemen made the big 10 first and second team, all big 10 first and second teams. Um, They had they got they also got like amazing running back or not running back. Well, they got Blake Corum back. Um, they weren't expecting to get Blake Corum back. Um, they got offensive linemen back that they weren't expecting to get back. Um, Michigan got a lot of players back who they weren't planning on getting back. And they also killed it in the transfer portal, especially in regards to offensive linemen. Um, Michigan's going to be very good this year. I've. I've this is not the first time I've said this. This is not the first time I've said this this offseason. This Michigan team is going to be the best Michigan team since they split the national title in was it 97? Um, I was I was to say that maybe maybe you'll give them a little bit more credit maybe the the best since the um since the number 1 versus 2 no 6. That's fair. I mean, yeah, e either or. I'm not going to debate which one of those teams were better, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's th this is going to be a very, 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 very good Michigan team. Um, mm -hmm. It's so, so I, I gonna... do not I do not disagree. I do not disagree with, uh, you know, I've been sort of. So I'm going to go back happened to the... with Kingston. We're not doing a recruiting episode today. He yeah. just he picked Notre Dame. That's all. I want to go up, uh, back up to the unit rankings here. So they have Michigan, um, best quarterback, running back, lineman, both lines and linebacker and second best defensive back group and wide receiver tight end group here. Ohio State, fifth best quarterback in the Big Ten. So you're he's just he's unproven. So, like, I, I, I know you might want to take offense oh, to oh, that. Who? Who's who's Wisconsin's quarterback? Uh, sh I forget his name. He's a transfer. Um, crap. What's his name? He's transfer from somewhere. He's he's good. Yes, Mordecai Tanner Mordecai. Thank you, Gangland. And um, who's um Maryland's quarterback? Uh, that one I don't remember. Isn't it still um, uh, Baby Tua? Is it still? Cool. Oh, that's right, because COVID. Man, COVID. Just making sure some of these players can stick around forever. And um, and then who? And then and then um, who's uh, Penn State's quarterback? Uh, why why are you making me do name recall? I'm terrible at name recall, Kyle. Stop it. I, it's uh, the kid from Ohio who I really like. Yeah. It's, he, but he's uh, never played. So you're telling me those guys Drew are Allard. better Thank than... Drew Allard. Thank you, chat. 
those guys are better than McCord. Um, one, they're doing full team. They're not saying starting quarterback. They're saying the quarterback group. And it's worth noting that if you look at the quarterback grouping at Ohio State, if you look at that entire team, there's half of a start among them. Kyle McCord okay. split a game. And that that just plays into it. And again, it's a. Pr you could certain we can have an argument about whether they should be ahead of Penn State or not. I, I agree with you, Kyle. I'll, I'll say that Ohio State should have fourth. OK, Ohio State should have fourth. I'm not going to argue the Penn State one, but. In, in regards to Michigan, Wisconsin, um, Maryland, they have experienced quarterbacks, whereas Ohio State has a guy who's never started before. Okay. That's why they that's why they're going to get those nods. They have returning starts. Ohio State doesn't. So, OK, I can I can understand that Michigan has the they have Michigan ranked as the best running back um, group here. OK, I, OK. I, no, I mean, they have two. OK. NFL yeah. running okay. backs. <laughs> Easy. So, so they uh, have and, Penn State. You could make and then and, and Ohio State's not getting any credit for Evan Pryor because Evan Pryor has basically never played before. So as Correct. much as like you and I and all the other Ohio State fans know Evan Pryor's a absolute star and that no one else knows about, you're just not going to get that credit in 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 this forum. So they have Ohio State third behind Penn State here. And yeah, Singleton's a great running back, but taken into account of the whole running back group as a whole. Sure. Yeah. I, I yeah, it, it's gotta be it's gotta be Ohio State. I I'm not familiar with I, with anybody else they, they on have this a, um, Penn State they, running back group here. They, it is a it is a deep room. Like in all fairness, it is a deep room. Um Penn State's running backs are very good. But I do agree that Ohio State should be number two. I do agree with you. And then the the only other one that I'm just shocked in here. Oh, is by the way, Kyle, at, you, you got you got to say Ohio State's Ohio State's not only number one wide receiver crew in the Big Ten, but they're also uh, if you look at the national rankings, also number one. Which, duh. Yes. They 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 duh. place <laughs> yeah, two. Duh. They they place the they uh, if you look at the pick six preview all. Uh, all American team. You can easily read that to say that Ohio state has the two best wide receivers in the country. One and two. Mm -hmm. We have four guys that would start anywhere else in the big 10. A hundred percent. I would say at least four. Yeah. You can, could maybe add more into there, but yeah, we'll say four. <laughs> um, so I was oh, in the running second. back room. No, I, I disagree. No, th this, this year is very Big Ten is very deep in running Nick backs. Singleton's great. Um, Michigan has two NFL running backs um, in Edwards and, and Blake Corum. Um, the uh, Michigan or the uh, Wisconsin running back is is excellent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Braylon Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Braylon Allen's excellent. Um, it's a, yeah. This is a I very think, good. I don't, don't get me wrong. I'd take healthy Travion over any of them, but he has to stay healthy. Yes. Um, he has to stay healthy. Uh, so also, I wouldn't, I, Tra in all honesty, Travion wouldn't mind having Michigan's offensive line in front of him either. Yeah. So the, the only other issue I had with the rankings here, again, just, just nitpicking here is kind of, kind of the same line to, as the beginning of the show here with, with not much respect to Ohio State defensive line here, they have Ohio State number four Ridiculous. in the defensive line. I'll take I'll take Ohio State's defense if we're especially if we're talking about the whole room. If we're talking about the whole room, I'm taking Ohio State's defensive line over anybody anybody in the Big Ten. I wouldn't Absolutely. trade our crew of defensive linemen with anybody in the Big Ten. I wouldn't even entertain it. I. Uh, Again, I, I like pick six preview. I'm going to keep saying this because like it's Kyle, what, Kyle and I are here to disagree. We're here to agree with stuff and to disagree with stuff. And if, when we agree with stuff, we just say, yeah, I agree. And we move on. The interesting stuff is where we disagree, right? So if it sounds like I'm ripping on them, I'm really not. It's just that we disagree and that's fine. 
Um, but the they are totally underestimating Ohio State's defensive line room. Um, if you look at Ohio State's defensive line room, first team, second team, I don't remember the last time. Because there, there have been times in which Ohio State's defensive ends have been stupid deep. Um, but the addition, the addition of Malone to this team has made the two deep at all four positions the best it's been in a very, very, very long time. You could have, I, I might have a conversation of ever. If we're talking about eight guys, four defensive ends, four defensive tackles. Who came up with this list? Have they checked any projected mock drafts? I was saying the same thing earlier, Chop. Um, I, I was literally saying that that Hall is already being projected into the top 15 of a lot of mock drafts. Uh, so I, I agree. I don't understand why or where that's coming from. Uh, I, I just think it's a miss on their part. Again, they yeah, have to do this with a lot of teams. They're, not everything's going to be perfect. I think this is a miss on their part. Agreed. Yeah. Um, other notable Kyle. <coughs> it's just, just um, it's not all doom and gloom I, here. Yeah. When was the last I mean, we saw? There's talent on. There's talent in the defensive room. Um, defensive backs are fourth, which. Okay. We could have disagreements about. I'll say that there's a lot of unproven talent in the secondary at the moment. So that might be fair ish. Like, I just, I, I don't know. I, they have Iowa number one and like, I get it. And they have two really good. They have two backs. really good defensive backs. Do they have four really good defensive backs? I would say if you're going to be number one. <laughs> Unproven, unproven talent, but an extremely high ceiling. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. And, and, I, and I think they're not giving. Yeah, I, I think that they are underplaying a few Ohio State guys here. Um, Igbenosa, I, I don't think that they're acknowledging the importance of Igbenosa coming into this team. Um, I don't think they're acknowledging the importance of Malone coming into this team. Hancock, I, I think will be very good this year, uh, wherever they end up playing him. They, they are giving Burke credit to, to their credit. They, they really like Burke. Um, having all of them healthy is big for sure. Absolutely. Yes. For sure. Yep. But yeah, um, to 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 I I do agree. I guess like I think fourth is fair right now. I mean, could they be could they be number one or number two in the Big Ten? Sure. Yeah, they the, the talents there. But I think for what we've seen so far, I think fourth is justified for seeing the other players. That well, I would say my my issue with four is that I don't think Iowa is deep enough to be number one. I'll say that. Um. Penn State at three, I have to plead some ignorance on um, because I don't know because they here's my issue. They lost they lost a ton of guys. Now, that's not to say that they don't have talent behind those guys because they they might. I, I just don't I don't I don't know. I don't know enough about like the guys at Penn State who we haven't seen yet. I, so I, I do think have it's to plead a bit of before. ignorance. But I think it was what you were you saying before, you Jared, with my experience. Thought? Yeah, yes, that, with experience. Yes, they have. They have. If you're looking at the secondary here, three of their four defensive backs, starting defensive backs, are seniors, and then and then their fourth one is a junior. I so, think lots of experience. I think Penn State, whether it be the quarterback room or the defensive back room, um, is getting a lot of credit for guys with that experience that Ohio State isn't getting. Um, yeah, so I just, the uh, quarterback at fifth best in the, in the big 10 is a joke. 
Uh, I get it. I get it, but it's a joke. Um, and the defensive line. The defensive line, that's a joke. I no, 100%. Absolute joke. Ohio State has the number one defensive line, um, at least in the Big Ten. At least yep. in the Big Ten. I won't, I won't hear anything to the contrary. Again, like first team and second team, all Big Ten, according to uh, Pick 6 Preview, only placing JT. That's it. Like, with all due respect to Mason Graham or Joe Evans or any of these other guys who are, like, in the second team, are you telling me? My my point exactly, Chop. Um, are are you are you actually telling me that you'd rather have those guys over Jack Sawyer or 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 Mike Hall or Tyleek Williams? Because no, absolutely not. N- no how, no way. Zero percent. All right, in the. I think probably the big thing I here, just, Jared. Can I, can I real quick? Northwestern. 14, 14, 13, 14, 14, 11, 13. I'll take what is Curry 11? too. Hold on. Which, which one's 11? Linebackers. <laughs> I Chop, I, okay. I, 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 I've been saying, I, I don't know. know. I don't yeah. remember specifically when you joined the, the chat, Chop. Um, but... I said it like Ohio state's too deep at defensive line is maybe the best I've ever seen it. So you start adding Curry into the conversation and Tywin Malone to the conversation. Um, again, like all the second team guys, um, you know, add, add Caden Curry, add Tywin Malone, add Ty Hamilton, add Kenyatta Jackson, Amari Abor, um, it's they, they're just so stupid deep and they have experience. I, I do not, I do not understand this ranking at all. All right, Kyle, let's, um, I was going to say, look, look, looking at their overall or their projection for the big 10, they have here. In the East, Michigan one, then Ohio State two, Penn State That's fine. three, Maryland, then Maryland, four. Michigan State, Indiana, and Rutgers. I personally would flip Rutgers and Indiana, but let's not spend any time about it. Mm, okay. Who cares? And it's six the, and it's seven. And then, it's seven and it's six. Who cares? But I yeah, would. I would, the, I would put Rutgers over Indiana. And then the West, they have Wisconsin, then Iowa. Illinois, Minnesota, Nebraska, Purdue, and Northwestern. Uh, I don't. I agree with I agree with that. That's that's actually the order I think it's going. It I think will um will be at the end of the season. Kyle is is the Big Ten West stacked? <laughs> well, here here's funny. Here's something. Is the funnier. Big Ten West stacked? Because like. I'm thinking, man, Nebraska at five, I actually kind of like Nebraska, like not a lot, but compared to where they were the past couple of years, like I like them to make a good improvement this year. But then I asked myself, well, who am I sliding down behind them? And like, I don't see anyone to slide. I mean, I don't know. I think Minnesota's low. I think I'd have Minnesota below. I think I'd have Minnesota at two. Iowa at three, Illinois, Illinois and Nebraska at four and five in, in some order. I don't know. Now I know Kyle's actually gone through the schedules, so he might have a better idea of actual records because I'm just sort of ranking them at how good I think they are. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily taking their records into account when I'm saying this. Kyle All has right, actually so, gone through the schedules. So, so I'm, I'm going to post Kyle's this. Got, I'm going to post this. I'm going to, I'm going to see how, how much people are going to, to rip me on here. So I got, I went through each game 
for the Big Ten here. And then did win losses and, and put them together here. And here's what I came up with, what I project for the Big Ten this year. Uh, not recruiting for once. Um, Michigan 11 actually, and 1, Ohio State 11 and 1. Uh, actually, hold on. Hold on. Actually, that should be flipped. Hold on. I, yeah. I did one wrong. Hold on. Let me correct that real quick. Let me let me delete that real quick and I will update it. We were not talking about Kingston. We're not doing a recruiting show. There you go. So you have Ohio State finishing first at 11 and one, Michigan finishing second at 11 and one, which tells us how you think the head to head will go. Uh, Penn State at 10 and two. Kyle, are those two losses, Ohio State and Michigan? They have mm -hmm. to be. I already they know I've done be. the yep. math. Um, Mar <laughs> then then the drop off comes. Uh, Maryland at seven and five, Michigan State at six and six, Rutgers at three and nine, Indiana at two and ten. Without actually going through the individual games like I know you have done, that all feels approximately right to me. Um, that that all feels approximately correct to me. Wisconsin ten and two, Iowa ten and two, Illinois eight and four, Minnesota six and six. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at looking okay. at Minnesota's but Nebraska Minnesota's... five and seven, which is a decent. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the schedule, Kyle. I know you're itching to do it. We'll, we'll do it. I promise. <laughs> um, that would make the Big Ten pretty respectable across the board. I agree. Um, I yeah, wasn't it last year that like like. Half of the of the West was like the same record or like one or two games off. I, th I thought that like, was, was very competitive last year, wasn't it? So you have Ohio State lose. Well, I don't know who Kyle has Ohio State losing to yet. We'll we're gonna take a look. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. Purdue yeah, three and nine. Year. Northwestern two and ten. Kyle, I I don't see Northwestern winning twice. I'm without looking at the schedule yeah, yet. Uh, I'm saying you, you it. Want, I don't see Northwestern. There, there are two well, winnings twice. There, there are two wins, Jared. Okay. There are two wins. Let's go through the Northwest. Okay, let's, let's start off strong. Let's go through the Northwestern schedule. All right. So week one here, Rutgers right, here's and Northwestern. <laughs> nope. Nope. Here, here's, here's, here's their schedule. There you go. I see two wins. Kyle has uh, a loss to Rutgers, a win over Temple. Or no, that's UTEP. That's okay. UTEP. Okay. Mm, no, I disagree. <laughs> I, I honestly disagree. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even trying to make a joke. Kyle. I honestly disagree. Um, a I loss to, a loss to Duke, which is embarrassing, but probably true. Uh, lost to Minnesota, lost to Penn state. A win over Howard. I'll, I'll give you Howard. I'll give you Howard. Mm -hmm. um, Nebraska, uh, then they lose the rest. Nebraska, Maryland, mm -hmm. Iowa, Wisconsin, Purdue, Illinois. Yeah. That's, no, they're that's not beating you for Northwestern. A loss to buy. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. All right, Kyle. Uh, the, one I, the one I think I disliked the most was Minnesota at six and six from your predictions. Um. So let's go through the Minnesota schedule. All right. So here is Minnesota's. Uh, let me grab a screen cap because Google Docs does not like me copying it. There we go. All right. So Minnesota, they'll, they'll start off the season strong with two wins against Over Nebraska, Nebraska and, East, and Western Michigan, which is Eastern Michigan. You have W in the. Oh, yeah, it's Eastern. That, that's my bad. It's Eastern. Yeah, it's Eastern Michigan. I think Nebraska pulls the upset. I I don't, but I also wouldn't mm -hmm. be shocked. Austin, I would not be shocked. Um, then UNC. Uh, they lose on to the North road Carolina. To Chapel, on the road to Chapel Hill. Nah, I, th I, think, I think UNC will win that game. If you say so. No, no, you're, you're probably right. I think Northwestern win. 
win against Northwestern. Yeah, they're going to be everyone. Everyone beats <laughs> Northwestern except for Howard. That's understood. They're going to beat Louisiana Lafayette. Louisiana Lafayette, the win. Yeah, they'll lose to Michigan, then a bye week, a loss to Iowa. See, I, I, I don't mm-hmm. buy that Iowa's as good as people think they are. I just don't. I do not buy it. All right. All right. I, I think everyone's too high on Iowa. Okay. Um, Michigan, they lose to Michigan State. I I think I like Minnesota more than I like Michigan State at this point. Um, they have a win over Illinois, which is interesting. It's an interesting prediction. They'll they'll beat Purdue. They'll lose to Ohio State. They'll lose to Wisconsin. I gave them a couple more wins than you, for sure. I think I had them at least eight and four. All right. So yeah, I I think six and six is I think is reasonable for minnesota here Re- reasonable sure i mean but i just that's that's not where i'd put my money if i if i were you all right all right which one uh, do you want to talk about next uh just going to confirm that you do in fact ohio have ohio state losing to notre dame that was mm-hmm. that was your one prediction for the for the ohio state's one loss for Michigan's one loss, you have them losing to Ohio State, which, hey, I will I will take that for what it's worth. I mm-hmm. will take that. Um, if I were to predict one loss on the Ohio State schedule, however. I'd actually say. Um, I it's it's Michigan. Yeah, it's, it's Michigan. I didn't want to say it like. It's very obviously Michigan. Um, it's the biggest test. It really is. And they, they just, they need to have the offensive line playing better by then. However and good why, it is or isn't State, in week one, it has to be better by then. And and that's why I think Ohio State will win that game because they'll, they'll get things figured out. They got the, they got the talent and I think they'll, they'll pull out the nope. victory up in Ann Arbor uh, this year. And the, and the loss to Notre Dame early in the season Ultimately, won't won't really matter. I mean, I agree with you from a national perspective. I don't think it'll matter. Um, you go eleven and one and win the Big Ten and beat Michigan, you're going to the playoffs. That's that's fine. Even with a, de- a decent offensive line, if we can stop the pass, it'll be a comfortable win. I don't think I don't think you're winning comfortable over Michigan this year. I. I Michigan's very, very is a very, very good Michigan team this year. Um, and not just good, but deep. Like, they're not going to get derailed by an injury or two. They're not. Like, you, you mean, you could look at, like, a couple of these Big Ten teams and be like, oh, man, but if they lose so-and-so, they're toasted, they're done, it's over. I don't I there's not a so-and-so on the Michigan team, in my opinion, that they could lose and it would just end their season. I, I, they're very good. They're very deep. Yeah. All right. What, what, what other um, teams here, Jared, do you want to look at? Um, I mean, I mean, Penn State, Penn State, Penn State, they're going to, They'll win their out of conference games. Um, I mean, UMass, you, Delaware, you went, yeah, and West you Virginia. Very, you went very chalk here with them winning every game except Ohio State and Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. They, I, I would, I would say Penn State has. I think they have the correct type of team to beat Michigan. They get Michigan at home. Um. I would I would be nervous about that game fire Michigan. I do think Michigan's a better team, but um, Penn State's fully capable of beating them, especially with the game being, you know, in in Happy Valley. Um, mm. I don't have a strong feel on Michigan State one way or the other, if I'm being honest. So I'm not going to challenge you on any of that. Let's take a look at uh, Iowa. I am not high on Iowa. I like Michigan State right, here, here. to upset Penn State this year. That's an interesting take. All right, here's here's Iowa. 
Iowa schedule. So they start off the season with Utah State, Iowa they'll State, and Western Michigan. In Western they'll Michigan, win, they'll win all three of those. Right. Then they go on the and they're on the road to Penn State. I they'll think lose State that. Take care you, of business there, which you have here. Then they then they play with then for the rest of October. Well, Michigan State's in September, but before their by before their bye week, Michigan State, Purdue, on the road to Wisconsin and Minnesota. I think See, they'll I, lose one. They'll lose one game there between those four. I think they lose. Purdue, two Purdue's, games. Purdue's not that is not that good. I'm no, not no, high on not. Minnesota. I am, and I'm, I think I'm I think they'll take care. Of, and I think they they take care of business against Sparty at home. Um, the, I, I think if you look at the stretch of Michigan state, Purdue, Wisconsin, Minnesota, I think they lose two of those games. I think they absolutely lose to Wisconsin. And then between the Michigan state and the Minnesota game, I don't know which one of those they lose, but they lose one of those. Um, I just, the, I, 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 their offense in November, is such a, Kyle, their offense in November, is such a they're shit not, they're show. Not, they're not losing in November. They're not losing in November. I think I think Illinois will be will be a close game, but they'll go undefeated in November. I I do not share your confidence. You might be right, but you're you're saying it way too confidently, in my opinion. Um, Illinois is good enough to beat them. Nebraska by that point in the season, especially. Again, if this was Nebraska in. They have a brand new coaching staff. If this was Nebraska in September, but it's not, it's, it's Nebraska in November. I think, I think they have an excellent chance there. Illinois gets upset by Northwestern. I, I, I don't see it. Uh, let me go back to the big 10 ranks here for a second. Um, who who's the quarterback at Iowa right now that they're literally once they have Iowa as having the sixth best quarterback room in the big 10. There's, there's legitimately no shot in hell. They're one spot behind Ohio state is the drop off after five that bad. Maybe. That's McNamara. Is that who it is? Does it, by the way, does it matter with their offensive coordinator still being there? I don't know. Yeah, it is, in fact, Cade McNamara. Yeah, running backs number five, sure. Offensive line number eight, wide receiver slash tight end at 10. Where's the points going to come from? Are you looking at pick six previews? Yes, we are. I mean, I mean, quarterback I mean where, play where, where did the, the Big points Ten come from play? last year, Jared? Where did the points come from last year? Uh, where did the points come from last year? The defense. I mean, po- <laughs> well, okay, that's okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so so it, it's going to be tough because I know you joined late. They have Ohio State behind Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, yeah, quarterback room wise. Um, I'm I'm missing one. And Maryland. And Maryland. Mm-hmm. They have they have Ohio State fifth in the Big Ten in the quarterback room. And by the way, that's not the one I'm most mad at. The starter, sure, you can dock. I, I dock it. I agree. Because he just has no starts, which can bump you all the way down to uh, third or fourth, in my opinion. It's it's absolutely insane. Austin, just to, I, I don't know for everyone listening, but I just, I want to see Austin's reaction to this. They have Ohio State. Where uh, Austin, where, where do you think Ohio State's defensive line room is ranked? In the Big Ten. Where do you think, uh, both, you can tell us both what you think and you, where you think it should be. You can tell us both. Um, While he's 
guessing Kyle. Uh, Illinois. Is... Let's look at let's look at Illinois real quick while he's looking okay. at that here. So I had I had Illinois at eight and four, eight and four here. So looking at their schedule. Let me, let me pull it up real quick here. So they start off. Let me copy that. So they start off with Toledo and Kansas wins. Austin says, then they, I think they should be put at seven. Oh, you think they probably put it at seven because they're fucking stupid, but it should be at two um, with a chance of being one. I, I, I corrected it, Austin. I, I got there eventually. Um, they have them at four. Uh, but there, I, I don't even know how you're saying. So I think they probably put it at seven because they are fucking stupid, but it should be two probably with the chance to be one. They should be number one. I, I Michigan's defensive line's good. I'm not saying it's not good, but I'm not trading. Are you trading? I'm not trading. It is good. I'm not saying it's bad. Mm. I'm not trading it. All right. Um, Illinois, back to Illinois here, Jared. Their so depth their is much better. I hard disagree. I Ohio State at the two deep at defensive line is, in, is insane. At the two deep, insane. All right. Uh, Illinois, Kyle. Sorry. Yeah. Toledo and Kansas, they start the season off. Win-win. Yep. Then they play Penn State. Lose to Penn State. Penn, lose to Penn State. Yep. Then FAU. They win against why, FAU. Why are you playing FAU? Okay. Then they play Purdue. You could play, you could play a lot worse teams. Yeah, that's true. They could play Wagner. Uh, <laughs> Purdue. Or Howard. Or Howard. Uh, I, I think Illinois, Illinois beats um, Purdue. I think Illinois beats Nebraska. They should they beat, beat Mar- Purdue. Then they beat Maryland. See, I just, I don't, I don't share your, con- they'll, and they'll beat Nebraska. I, I just don't. I do. I mean, Nebraska's they prob- not that good this year. I don't know. I, I like their they new do. coaching staff. They have good talent. That's, they did good things in the transfer portal. Here, here's, here's my projection. Um, what, what I think it is. Really? You think Kansas beats Illinois easily? That's crazy. All right. Um, um, they'll lose lose to Wisconsin. And then come off the bye week, they'll lose to, I think, Minnesota um, upsets Illinois coming off of um, in the first week in November there. They beat Indiana, lose to Iowa, and then they win against Northwestern for an 8-4 and four season for Illinois. That feels absolutely possible. Um, I think you gave Illinois a lot of the 50 fifties, except for maybe Minnesota. Um, I think if you look at like the stretch of Purdue, Nebraska, Maryland, where you gave them three out of three, I think they come out of that stretch two and one. All right. That's fair. That's fair. I don't, I don't necessarily know who, but I think, I think it happens. <laughs> uh, I think Kansas mm-hmm. beats Illinois easy, to be honest. Kansas has a good team and their quarterback is top 10 in the country. Kansas has a uh, good quarterback room. Uh, but, but Illinois has a really good, or has a pretty good defensive line though. Yeah. I, th- I think, I don't, I don't know how good Kansas offensive line is though, but I mean, if, if Illinois is going to get that pressure on them, I don't care how good of a quarterback you have. You're you're not going to have time to to throw it. Uh, I mean, yeah, Kansas was sneaky good, but so was Illinois. Mm-hmm. Illinois finished eight and five. Let's not forget, like the they were second in the in the West last year, where the West had four teams. Four teams who went um who had eight or more wins last year. Easier uh, Oklahoma and Texas are not gone. Yeah, that's that's 24. One more season. 
Yeah, they are not gone yet. Not yet. Texas and any, Oklahoma any, still in the Big 12. Any any other teams you want to look at here? I know we're at the hour mark here, but any other team <laughs> any other teams you want to look at here? Um, no. I would say we're at the hour mark. Uh let's try and Kyle for Kyle's corner, do you want to try and knock out some Ask Sloopcast questions or do you have something specific? Um no, we can we can answer them real quick here. So, um lightning round lightning round lightning round answers here, Jared. Meanwhile, Austin um, has a trivia question. All right, we'll save that to the end here. Um, <coughs> who was the last team to win back-to-back national titles? No, no, there's an additional back in there. Because oh, the back to back to back. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know the answer to that. Okay, I know the answer to that. See, it doesn't it doesn't give us a great deal of confidence. Oh, okay, you. It's in the back of 36, 37, and 38 seasons. And then they, they won four out of five. <laughs> did did any of those come when last last year when we did the goofy claimed titles, did any of those come up? I, curiosity? I don't remember. I don't remember. All right. Um, let's get to the questions real quick here. Um Sun card with a few questions here. He says, would you prefer to have divisions this season or not? not. No. Get rid of them. Divisions Get rid of them. I hate them. Uh, who is the best non-Buckeye in the conference? The non- best non-Buckeye. I have to pick one not-Buckeye in the entire conference. Um, I have to pick one? England said Donovan Edwards. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, I would have to say it's it's tough because you're comparing a bunch of cross position stuff. I. Oof. Uh, I don't, I don't have a quick answer to that. Maybe Zach Zinter. I hate to pick a Michigan guy. Mm, that's that, that was going to be my pick. Actually, <laughs> it was going to be Zach. I'm going to go Zach Zinter because I'm an offensive line guy and I, and I hate that I picked a Michigan player, but here we are. I, I tell you what, if the, if the question was, who would you steal for, for if you could steal someone for Ohio state? Did the I wouldn't have hesitated. I'd have said Zach Zinter without even thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that was gonna be that was gonna be my pick there, but I I'll I'll, I'll go with um I guess I'll go with Donovan then because I was that's the other I think that's the other answer I think a lot of us are thinking though. All right. Um who should the Big Ten change? What? what should the Big Ten change its name to? Suncard is very bothered by the fact that there's 14, soon to be 16 teams in the league and it's still called the Big Ten. I don't know why that bothers him so much. Um, the Big North, and that's obvious. I mean, we've been calling it the Big North in this show. We, we, we've nicknamed the Big Ten the Big North in the, on this show for a very long time. So I, I think that's established. Yeah. I yep, think that's the North or, or the point. Big North. Yep, I, I, th- I think I think the Big North is a is a pr- is a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, we probably should get all of our nicknames in there, Austin. If I can remember what they all are. All right. Um, got another. Hold on. Question. What, what are they? It's it's the Big North, the Dixie. Um. What the A C C C C C C C C C um <laughs> the big pack or the pack well, i forget what we used to call the pack 12 and the big who cares about the big 12 big 12 of course who cares about the pack 12 at this point or the acc right, for that uh, matter all right um but guy esquire says if the wild if not, west that's what it was yeah if not Mar- marvin harrison jr who would be the big 10 offensive player of the year i think donovan i think donovan would be my second choice then Kyle McCord. It's, it's a stats game, Zach. It's a stats game. It'll offensive player of the year. It'll be a stats game. 
Um, it could be Corum as well. Um, I think the two of them will end up splitting, splitting so many carries that it'll make getting that title difficult. Uh, Kyle McCord, whether or not it could be a Buka, that's, that's you're not wrong. But <laughs> the fact that you say, oh, well, it could be a Buka or it could be Marvin Harrison Jr. Let just let you know that even if McCord isn't, you know, quote unquote, amazing this year, his stats are still going to be amazing. Yeah. Because that's that's just right. what we do here. Um, all right. Um, last question is here. Will there be a non Ohio State big 10 quarterback that gets national attention. Uh, fine. I guess, I guess also not name JJ because gross. Hmm. Um, court that gets national attention. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think, uh, McCarthy will just because, uh, he's their quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Tanner Mordecai in Wisconsin, um, will as well um probably anyway i i think so um and i i'm i'm a big fan of drew aller um i i know he's unproven at this point but i like him a lot i liked him i liked him back when he was one of he was like not even a top 10 player in the state of ohio and then by the end by the time the recruiting cycle ended he was one of the best quarterbacks in the entire class Mm -hmm. all right um last question here um game you're most excited for that does not include ohio state in well in the big 10 it's a big 10 preview i'm going to assume he meant in the big yeah 10. um and i'll say penn state michigan it's I, I think the I think the Big Ten this year is is three teams cut above, um, and it's probably two teams cut above. But I still think Penn State's pretty good. Um, can I say USC Michigan twenty twenty four because lol? Uh no, because he said this year. <laughs> so yes, he said no, no this you can't. Year. Um, is that all the questions? That is, I was I was trying to come up with an answer here, but I saw who was playing Washington, and I'm not going to say my answer. Originally, I was going to say um, Sparty in Washington, but um, but I don't have high hopes for Sparty this year going um, going 500 this year because I mean it's a chance for everybody to watch their their favorite uh, former. Um, Big Ten quarterback play. Penix. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's, always, a fan, it's always a fan favorite in our Swoop Cats here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's always hard to watch him play. Um, the. <laughs> God, I hate myself. The. <laughs> All right. Any uh, was that That's the last it. question? All right. That's it, Jerry. It's time yep. to end the show. It's time to end the show. Um. Tonight's ending music will be will be Motherfolk um, out of Cincinnati. They will be playing in, in Columbus this Saturday. This Saturday night, I may or may not be there. Just saying. Uh, they'll be at the Roomba Cafe um, in the Glen Echo neighborhood in Columbus. Um, so go go see them. And if you see me, say hi. If I'm there. I'm not 100% if I'm going yet, but if I'm there and you see me, say hi. Um, Roomba Cafe, Columbus, Ohio. Once again, this is uh, Motherfolk. I haven't picked a song yet, but we'll we'll get around to it. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to in, uh, in, encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Motherfolk. <laughs>